Hey, what's up beautiful people and welcome to another Vermintide video. Now, for those of you guys that didn't see yet, in yesterday's video we went through the patch notes of the recently implemented 3.1, which essentially implemented a bunch of balance changes from the big balance beta. Now, a bunch of you guys asked if I was going to do an updated version of the weapon tier list, which I will do in the near future, as well as asking if I was going to update the melee mastery mechanics guides. And well, the answer is yes and no. We're gonna cover that here today. But the thing is, 9 out of 10 of the weapon changes didn't actually touch the actual attack sequences and thus the inputs you need in order to sequence together your combos. And the few exceptions to that rule we are gonna cover here today, as well as taking a look at some of the weapons that received major buffs or nerfs. And first up on that list, we got the Halberd, which on top of being one of the best looking weapons in the game and having a skin called the Stick of Doom, has now been buffed into the realm of genuine viability, mainly by doing a switcheroo on the order of the first and second heavy attack, which now allows for two insane armor damage combos, the first and longest of which is a push block attack into a light attack, into a heavy attack, into a double light attack, and then repeating. Now that sounds a lot more complicated than it's going to feel. Essentially, it's a, it's a combination of two combos, the push block attack into the light attack, which is the original armor damage combo, and now you have this new combo, which is essentially a heavy attack into a double light attack. And you can then sequence those two together after each other in order to do a shit ton of armor damage whilst still having enough time to regenerate your stamina. And what I genuinely love about this weapon change is not just that the weapon is more viable now, but it feels genuinely fun to use, which is so important. And brings me to the new infantry damage combo, which is again super interesting and it feels Sort of awkward at the moment, but I, I'll probably get used to it. Anyways, you probably know this combo already. This is essentially just doing a light attack, doing a block cancel, and then doing another light attack. And this combo is still available and still preferable in a lot of situations, I would say. But now you also have the added option of structuring together a light attack with a heavy attack in order to do this really awkward feeling for some reason. I'm not sure why, but for some reason doing this combo felt really weird at first, but also really oddly satisfying. I don't know if it's, there's something about the camera angle when you sequence together these two sweeps that, I, I don't know, it's really hard to explain, but it feels really, really awkward input wise, but at the same time, really, really oddly satisfying when you nail it. But in either case, there is no doubt that this weapon change was really, really, really needed, has been done really, really, really well, and feels fairly balanced if you ask me, and genuinely makes me want to play Mercenary with the Halberd. In fact, one of the first things I did when the patch came out was purchase the new 1670 shilling skull hat for the Mercenary and queue up a quick play game. But anyways, that was by far the largest change to the input mechanics of any weapon, but let's move on to some of the more minor changes. That is, of course, depending on how you look at it, because even though it's a minor change, I feel like the impact is actually pretty huge. A lot of people really disliked the feeling of using the spear and shield, and I'd almost go as far as to say I didn't always enjoy it myself. And I think I speak for most people that felt this way when I say that it pretty much came down to how you dealt with infantry minions. Since the only attack you had with any cleave whatsoever was your first heavy attack, so you were pretty much limited to doing heavy attack, cancel, heavy attack, cancel, and so on. Now you have two options, which is great, because I think for a lot of players it can feel very demanding when you're constantly forced to doing heavy cancel, heavy cancel, heavy cancel, and so on. But now the third light attack in the sequence also has a major cleave, which means you can do a heavy attack into a double light attack and then repeating that sequence instead. Which feels a lot more forgivable input wise, a lot more relaxing, and just genuinely has a better flow. As for fighting armored enemies, there is pretty much no change, that's still a push block attack into a heavy attack. Now, one more weapon that has received a change to the actual inputs is the Mace and Shield. And this is true for both Bardian's Mace and Shield, but also Krupper's Mace and Shield. And as I understand it, there are really only two changes that relate to the actual inputs. The first being that now, his first heavy attack starts with a Shield Bash. The second being that his push block attack now chains into his third light attack, which in of itself has received some balance changes, giving it 10% critical hit chance and the same damage profile as the push block attack. Now the shield bash change is just great, because that allows you to sequence together shield bashes. 
Now as for fighting armored enemies, really the only change here is that you're gonna do a push block attack into a light attack, which seems to be a faster and better combo, and well that's about it. Not for the video, but for changes to inputs. So let's move on to some of the weapons that still function the same, but have received major nerfs or buffs. Now probably the weapon that has received the most changes while still functioning essentially the same is gonna be Sienna's Maze. Now it has in fact received so many changes that I'm not even gonna list them all to you, you can just look on the screen and stop the video if you wanna read it, but essentially to make a long story short, it's been buffed in every conceivable way. It has more dodges, it has faster attacks, it deals more damage, it's essentially just buffs all around. Which I think kinda makes sense if you think about it since seeing someone with this weapon equipped on a Sienna in quick play was essentially unheard of, like I don't recall the last time I actually went into a game and saw someone use this weapon, so it was really really needed. And honestly it feels crisp, like I genuinely feel like this is what the weapon needed, and hopefully we'll see a lot more of it in the future. As we move on to the simplest, yet least understood changes of all, which is the direct explosion, explosion, direct, explosion, explosion, direct. I have no idea what this change did, already thought it did that, but I can confirm it still does it, so let's move on. To the most controversial thing to happen in all of 2020. Oh, that's setting a bar. But I think you guys know what I'm talking about, the bill hook. Now, the bill hook was super freaking broken before this patch. Absolute no doubt, it was broken as hell. It was way too good at everything it did, not to mention it could do something that no other weapon in the game could, which was super super valuable. Now, essentially every time you actually collide a minion with your special attack, it's gonna cost you half a stamina. Also, the amount of effective dodges have been decreased from 99 to 3, which seems like a reasonable change. Although whether or not the stamina cost for the special attack is the right way to go about it, still remains to be seen. Now the major problem you're gonna have with this weapon is not lacking stamina when you're fighting elites, it's versus hordes, since you can no longer do the combo of special into light, special into light, which significantly reduces the time it takes to actually get to your second light attack, which is your cleave attack. Now you can still do your push block attack into a light attack, but that's not really gonna be viable for an entire horde. And whether or not this is the right change, well only time will tell as we move on to what is inarguably one of my favorite weapon changes in this patch, which is the flail. I absolutely love the playstyle of the flail. It's just so much fun to use, but it was just so underwhelming after it got nerfed. Now with the tank mass modifier and the 30% extra damage on the heavy attack, it just feels absolutely amazing. How amazing? Well, I've put a gameplay clip of this at the end of the video showcasing just how great it's gonna be that I did eventually lose, but the start of the run really well demonstrates just how strong this weapon is now with very little effort. Actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, let's just take one of the clips now. This lighting mechanism still functions. Perhaps others do. Magnificent. Oh, glorious salt spire. Wait for it. Wait for it. And this is legend, just to be clear. Wait for it. Okay, maybe I shouldn't overhype it because it's actually not that impressive. It's more like. No effort. Dead. 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 More dead. He's also dead. Next one's also dead. Oh, I actually have to dodge. Uh, too much effort. <sighs> Anyways, another weapon that has received major buffs all around is the spear. Now again, there are no changes to the combos, no changes to the mechanics. It's essentially just extra damage and more cleave all around. And you can clearly feel when you're fighting stuff that the weapon just seems to carry more weight now. And feels like an all around good weapon that's great for both slashing and dashing, impaling and prevailing. And all this is true because it rhymes. One hand sword gang is back, woo! Now, the one handed sword has received major buffs to its damage output. And really, what more could you possibly ask for? I mean, it still has 99 dodges and a big chain one. I mean, unless you count Kirillion as one. Which actually, now that I think about it, you totally should. Yeah, for sure, undoubtedly, inarguably, for certain, scientific fact. Now, we're not gonna go through every single one of the nice weapon changes, but I feel like one last that really stood out was the two-handed axe. And again, it's just buffs all around, it just feels better, it feels stronger, it feels like it carries a lot more weight. When you attack, 
it, as you can see, it just genuinely feels like everything goes faster, everything feels more impactful, and you're essentially just slicing through rats at a pace that would rival even Gordon Ramsay in a homeless shelter. Now lastly, before we get to a super epic explosion for absolutely no reason, consider that this was literally just a legend test run with Vanguard and nothing special about it whatsoever. Like, I'm not claiming to play well here or even try that hard, but it just felt so easy. Now, I'm saying that even though I eventually lost because I got grabbed by a strangler, but literally fighting a bunch of Stormrim and so many elites, it just felt like nothing. You were cutting through them like butter, you didn't have to care about their shields because, you know, it's a flail, so you have light attacks that can literally damage through shields, but the addition of that tank mass modifier, like, holy fuck, it's strong. Admittedly, not enough time has passed since the release of this patch to claim for certain that this is gonna be the new Salt Spire meta, but as it looks right now, I genuinely think that this is the most viable weapon in the game currently for the Zealot. And honestly, the closest comparison I can think of is the old Axe and Falcon. I, I felt like I couldn't really do anything wrong, that was the feeling I had. It wasn't just that the weapon felt good and strong the way the billhook might do, but it was really just I felt like no matter what combinations I did versus these armored enemies, they would just melt. And well, pretty much the same was true when facing infantry. And it honestly caught me off guard just how little effort I actually had to put into the game for everything in a 2 meter radius to just drop dead. Now obviously a lot of this also had to do with the fact that I was playing Zealot, I had my passive stacks at maximum, which obviously always helps when you're playing the Zealot, but nonetheless I'm glad to say that I think the Flail is gonna be one of the most exciting weapons in the game going forward. At least I hope so, and well it's nice to know that there is at least an alternative option to the now fairly hard nerf hook, although I'm not saying it isn't viable, I still think it's one of the best weapons in the game, but I do feel like it potentially needs a tweak or two, although admittedly that could just be the bias of the weapon having been so strong before that you almost can't help but feel like it's too weak now, but regardless, I'm excited for the flail, I've been hoping that they would buff this weapon for quite a while now, and I think overall again this has been some good patch notes, again there were several weapons that I didn't mention because I didn't want to bore you to death by repeating every single minor tweak in detail, but if you guys want another video like this for the ranged weapons or for the new talents, let me know down in the comments below as we transition to the final part of this video, which is one of the more successful explosions I've managed to pull off in recent history. Successful meaning no crash and you know, reasonable-ish FPS. Oh yeah! God, I love explosions. Hey, what's up guys? Just thought I'd uh, end this video on a little bit of a, a low-key. You know, I'm always up here. So I thought I'd just say thank you to so much. Uh, thank you so much to everyone uh, for helping me please the uh, YouTube algorithm overlords. And uh, just for all your support in general these days. Now, uh, unfortunately, I was just told yesterday that uh, that my dog had passed away, only uh, three years old, yeah, she was put down, so uh, for that reason, <laughs> you know, it was a little bit, it was a little bit hard, uh, I'll admit, but uh, still, we're almost at 5,000 subscribers, and really, you guys are what keeps me going every day, I know it sounds so cringe, I know, it's like, it's you guys, uh, you, you know, but I mean it, I'm not even joking, uh, like, I have a bad day if I don't get nice comments, on my YouTube. I, I know that sounds so, oh, look at me, I, I, I need a time, but for real, these days, uh, when you put your all into something, then it really what gets me through those those days is really just reading nice things. Like, it really is. Like, I'll be honest about it, it really is. So thank you so much for that. We're almost at 5,000 subscribers as well. So if any of you feel like I am worthy of that YouTube real estate, then uh, it would of course be much appreciated. And uh, if not, then still, thank you so much for watching all the way through the video. I hope it was uh, interesting, infor informative, or uh, at the very least, uh, that you were somewhat entertained. And if not, then I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I had to say. So uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, and as always, I love you guys. Stay awesome. Peace out, peace out.